Hi teachers, this video is all about classroom management. In truth, classroom management is kind of hard to make a video about because there's so many variables. And every individual teacher has their own tolerance level for how much chaos they can kind of withstand within the walls of their classroom before it becomes completely unnerving. However, all this being said, let's talk about classroom management. After all my years in teaching, my view on classroom management is I would rather not think about it. Quite honestly, I don't like worrying about classroom management. So if that's your goal, how do you get there? Well, in a perfect world, classroom management would be non-existent if all of your students were so engaged in the learning process that they didn't think about misbehaving, that they were so happy to be in your classroom they didn't cause any problems. And that can be attained up to a certain point, but you know, maybe 95%, but there's always going to be that 5%. And it really becomes a problem when 5% starts to feel like 95%. What do you do with that 5% to get them on board, to get them engaged in whatever it is you're trying to teach? I know that there are so many videos out there suggesting that building relationships with your students is the most important and sort of at the core of classroom management. And quite honestly, I agree with that. It is true. But the question is, what do you do in those first weeks of school when you haven't had time to build this relationship with your hardest students to teach? Uh, the answer is not exciting, but the answer is you have to be fair and consistent every day and you have to make some sort of effort every day to invest the most of yourself in the hardest children and no teacher really likes to hear that but it's true um, for example those super hard kids are the ones okay they're pushing your buttons to test the boundaries of what you're going to do so they need to see you treat everyone fairly from the extroverted, more popular girl or whoever kid over here to your sort of quiet introvert kid over here. They need to see you complimenting everyone in a genuine way without calling them out. Okay, how do you do that? You say, hey, I can see by the look on your face you know the answer, so I'm not going to call you for this one and then call on somebody else. And whether they knew the answer or not, they think that you think enough of them that they must have it figured out. There's so much psychology involved in teaching, it's kind of unbelievable. But you know, if you can compliment everyone in small ways and compliment those hardest kids in small ways and make an effort to get to know them just a little bit because you can't look like you're trying too hard but just a little bit every day then eventually they will speak to you and then eventually they will maybe even say something to you non-school related or ask you a question about something that's non-school related and that's when you've won. I mean, that's what they make teacher movies about, right? Winning over the hardest kids. We would be foolish to think that there were kids who teachers didn't find annoying. Now, I know that's not politically correct to say, but, but if teachers are watching this, we know, we know that some kids are just kind of annoying. And sometimes it's by their choosing. Uh, for example, maybe that one kid that you can see has so much potential, but they only do the bare minimum of what they have to do. You know, that's annoying. Or maybe um, somebody who's smart but super impulsive, and you, you're trying all these different methods to teach them not to be so impulsive, and it can be annoying that some days they get it and some days they don't. Um, sometimes their behavior isn't by choice. I am related to a little guy who was born to a mother who's an addict. And it's not his fault that he was born this way. Um, 
but I would imagine that for many, many years to come, his teachers will find his behavior annoying. And it's gonna take him a long time, you know, to figure out strategies to help him not to behave like that. But again, annoying, but not his fault. So, okay, here comes the really hard advice. Investing the most of yourself in the kids that you least want to do that with is the answer. That's the answer. And it comes at the beginning of the year in small, little, consistent doses. And that's it. I mean, there's no magic. There's no put a marble in a jar. There's no, you know, big enough sticker you can put on the top of their paper. You can't wrap your arm around them and good job. I mean, it's genuine. You have to actually invest yourself in the hardest kids. Sorry to bring the hard news, but that's really what it's about. So little ways you can do that. As that hard kid walks by, you say, did you get new shoes? No, I've had these for a year. Oh, well, I like them. All right, everybody, now we're doing this. Just little things like little comments. Just, uh, does your really hard kid have a runny nose? Don't say anything. Just put some tissue on their desk. Put a box of tissue on their desk, that's all it takes. Um, you see them scrambling around looking for a pencil? Don't fuss about it. Just take a pencil over there and put it on the desk. Tiny little gestures. Um, and even older kids, I know this sounds, you're not, some of you aren't gonna agree, but even to say, hey, Johnny or whatever it is, we're about to watch this video, we hit the light. You know, not asking Nancy knows it all to do those teacher task kinds of helping pass out papers or whatever it might be. Because the kid who's hard to teach is probably kind of low for a reason and they're not often given or trusted with extra responsibility. So tiny little things that you show, I'm asking you to do this for me. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say, but it, it works. I've been, this is my 23rd year and these small little tasks and compliments and I genuinely care about them know you recognize things about them, that you're observant about them. That means so much. The rest of the great news is that some kids need that more than others, but all kids need it to some extent. So, you know, nobody got into teaching to manage classrooms all day. You got into teaching to make a difference, I'm guessing. You make a difference by investing your whole self in your students every day. And when you do that, classroom management just kind of melts away. Sorry this wasn't a video about, I don't know, group games and group rewards and checklists of this kind and that. There's a million other videos about that. You'll figure that out. But the real key, I mean, if you're really gonna look for the answer, the real answer is investing yourself every day, especially in the hardest kids, consistently showing small, um, fair, because equality is so important. Every, all those kids want to see you being fair. You got to call out this one just as easily as you'll call out that one. Consistent, fair, investing yourself, and then presenting the material that you're actually trying to teach in a fun, and showing your personality kind of way, proving that you're human to the kids. You know, sometimes you have to admit, okay guys, I know vocabulary is not your favorite thing, but this is something that we really have to do because it is going to help you one day when you take a test called the SAT. You know, kind of telling them, I'm not a grown up who is just making up this stuff to give you to keep you busy. You know, letting them sort of know this is actually important. There's a reason we need to know this. Those, that's the key to classroom management. Being a human, being genuine, investing in their lives, and being consistent and fair. Ta-da, that's the end. Have a good day, everyone.